I remember that I was lied to about who was behind 9-11. What controls the world? It's money. It's a matter of controlling the resources of the world. They don't want peace. They don't want democracy. War makes money. Go back to Smedley Butler. You know, war is a racket. I mean, of course it was a conspiracy. Two or more people plotting anywhere to do something illegal is a conspiracy. On the 14th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, family members of the victims, President Barack Obama, and U.S. Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter delivered speeches commemorating those who died at Ground Zero in New York City, the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where the Flight 93 National Memorial officially opened up to the public. And after 14 years and forevermore, terrorists who threaten us will learn this simple yet unbending truth. No matter how long it takes, no matter where they may hide, they will not escape the long arm of justice. Another set of family members and politicians throughout the nation marked the anniversary with calls to do more than remember the events of 9-11. They're calling on the public to investigate the details of what happened that day and question the official U.S. government narrative. When you remember 9-11, don't just remember, I don't remember that you know 9-11 happened and I couldn't find my sister for almost 14 hours or she almost died. I don't just remember that. I remember that I was lied to about who was behind 9-11. The government version of events claims that Osama bin Laden directed 19 hijackers to fly four planes into high-profile locations across the United States, including the two planes that hit the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, one that hit the Pentagon, and one that was reportedly headed to Washington, which ultimately crashed in a field in Pennsylvania. The planes that hit the Twin Towers created a fireball of explosions, which weakened the internal steel columns within the buildings, causing three of the towers to fall at nearly free fall speed, including one which was not hit by a plane. The public is told that the attacks stem from the jihadist disdain for American freedoms. But not all of the public accepts this official story. This includes family members of the 9-11 victims. Bob McIlvain is one of these family members. McIlvain has been independently investigating the 9-11 attacks since his son's death and calling attention to what he says are discrepancies in the government's narrative of the events of that day. 14th anniversary, you've been involved with this movement for some amount of years now trying to get justice for your son. What feels different to you this year compared to past years? To be honest, nothing. Um, I, it, I've been doing this so long, and I really don't have any faith in this country, and I don't have faith that this will ever come to fruition because they just can't afford to, you know, the world politics won't allow it. Because it'll just, you know, we are an empire, and an empire is not going to allow this to bring them down. McIlvain and other survivors, family members, activists, architects, engineers, firefighters, and researchers are part of what is sometimes known as the 9-11 Truth Movement. These skeptics include groups like the Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, Firefighters for 9-11 Truth and Unity, Pilots for 9-11 Truth, Scholars for 9-11 Truth and Justice, and a long list of local activist groups and individuals from around the globe. There is no official position within this loose-knit movement. Instead, it's a mix of opinions, theories, and ideas which sometimes conflict with one another. Despite the wide-ranging theories, members of this movement generally agree that the official bin Laden narrative promoted by the U.S. government is full of holes. On Saturday the 12th, New York City activists partnered with architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth to co-host a symposium called Declassify the Truth, 9-11 Transparency on the Rise. We can be held indefinitely. We can be tortured. We can be assassinated. Merely for being associated with terrorism. Guess how terrorism is defined? It's not. In 2010, an online Washington Post article that should have broken the internet revealed that the CIA made fake videos of Osama bin Laden videos. And the CIA says these videos, while neither confirming or denying their existence, they say that those videos are a matter of national security. The architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth focus on the collapse of the Twin Towers as well as the collapse of World Trade Center 7, the 47-story tall building that fell later in the day despite not being hit by a plane. Indeed, much of the 9-11 Truth community sees the collapse of Building 7 as the smoking gun which reveals the presence of explosives used to bring the buildings down. According to NIST, the building collapsed due to fires that spread throughout it. The 9-11 Truth community, however, disputes the claims that fires were raging through the building, pointing to dark black smoke which signals oxygen starved fires. Building 7, obviously, that's a demolition. You know, an idiot can see that. My dog can see that. My grandchildren can see that. I will continue talking about that my son was murdered. It's an inside job. Just for the fact that he died, I could say he died before the planes. That's a strong possibility. 
when people say, how could that possibly happen? I said, because there are goddamn bombs in there. That's how it happened. The symposium also sought to evaluate legislation in Congress that seeks to declassify 28 pages of 9-11 evidence. The 28 pages in question are part of the joint inquiry into intelligence community activities before and after the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001 which was redacted by former President George W. Bush shortly after the 838-page report was released in 2002. Former and current government officials who have seen the documents have stated that the information relates to financing of the terrorists and points a finger at members of the Saudi government and possibly Saudi royalty. On the 14th anniversary, Congressman Thomas Massey called on the public to challenge the official story. Writing on Facebook, Massey said, quote, As a congressman, I had access to the documents, and while reading them, I had to stop every few pages to rearrange my understanding of history for the past 14 years and the years leading up to the attack. It challenges you to rethink everything. Massey went on to challenge his colleagues to, quote, read the pages on behalf of their constituents and co-sponsor a resolution which would force the declassification of the 28 pages. Despite promises from President Obama, he has remained silent on the 28 pages since taking office. My name is Terry Strada. I am the national co-chair of the 9-11 Families and Survivors United for Justice Against Terrorism. I stand here today united with members of the U.S. Congress and my fellow 9-11 family members and survivors seeking truth, accountability, and justice for all those that we lost and love. By hiding the truth about who financed 9-11, the guilty parties have gone unpunished, free to continue financing terrorist organizations, and as a consequence, we have witnessed the creation of branches of Al-Qaeda, like ISIS, grow at an alarming rate. It has long been reported the subjects of the redacted 28 pages point the finger at Saudi Arabia who have given billions of dollars to promote Wahhabi Islam, the very ideology that spawned those terrorist organizations and defined their jihadist agendas. Were the Saudis uh, involved in facilitating 9-11? Uh, and if so, what should we do about it? Right now, we can't have that discussion because the only people who have access to the information are the people in a very narrow band of the administration and the intelligence community uh, and they're not going to call for any significant changes uh, without strong motivation from the American people to do so. Much like the redacted 28 pages, Freedom of Information Act requests related to a number of different aspects of the 9-11 attacks have also yielded redacted and censored results. One of the people leading this fight is Vance Green, whose sister Diane was working in the World Trade Center on 9-11. Green's goal is to continue compiling documents and putting together pieces of a puzzle that he hopes will reveal more about what exactly happened on September 11, 2001. I got involved with the truth movement and the declassification efforts um, after finding out in 2005 that everything that I had believed for four years about the official explanation, uh, Osama bin Laden and 19 hijackers and uh, big bad evil boogeymen who read the Constitution wanted to kill all of us, was not true. Because I, I actually defended that story rigorously. I, I argued with my uh, significant other about uh, nuking Afghanistan because I wanted revenge. So I, I felt manipulated once I came into contact with some 9-11 um, Truth Movement documentaries and, and, and books. This is not a 9-11 uh, a family member who's quote-unquote drinking the Kool-Aid of the Truth Movement. I've spent the last um, almost six years now doing my own independent research, fact-checking and, and fact-finding mission, verifying every little tidbit of every claim the quote-unquote truther community has been saying. And instead of just sitting down and talking to members of the truth community and taking their word, I've been trying to get both sides and then going to our government and asking them uh, you know for uh, submitting FOIA requests basically to get them to speak to the claims or evidence from the 9-11 truth community so when I have both sides of the story from our government and the truth community I now have a full picture and the evidence doesn't match one person it, it's it's there's incongruity somewhere and the people of the story that's not consistent is unfortunately our government especially when the stories came out about uh, hijackers being alive so that posed a big problem for me that that was the one major thing that piqued my interest because if a guy who was supposedly on a plane and died on 9-11 he's not supposed to be walking into an embassy in Jeddah Saudi Arabia saying why are you showing my picture on mm -hmm. on television now, of course I didn't know that on September 11th I didn't know it on September 12th I didn't know it until four years later while Green focuses on FOIA requests 
The architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth have presented a body of evidence which they say proves the presence of nanothermite, a military-grade incendiary capable of assisting in a controlled demolition in the dust of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Centers. In presentation after presentation, Richard Gage, a member of the American Institute of Architects and founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, has attempted to bring the attention of his colleagues, the media, and the public to discrepancies between what the National Institutes of Standard and Technology claims was the cause of the collapse of the building and what can be observed by studying video of the collapsing structures. FEMA documents a 1,200-foot diameter debris field around each tower. Videos show multi-ton steel sections of hundreds of individual steel pieces ejecting out of the towers at 60 miles an hour for a distance of 600 feet. They also show clouds of debris pulverized in mid-air and isolated explosive ejections as many as 60 stories below the so-called crush zone. Videos also show the near total destruction of both towers. What does all this tell us about the forces and energies involved in the destruction? Gage and over 2,300 architects and engineers have signed a petition stating that the government's scientific explanations do not add up and that the buildings could not have fallen at the speed they did without the uniform removal of the support structures from the lower half of the building. Just a couple months back, there was an attempt to get the American Institute of Architects to vote on a resolution yeah. for investigating uh, Building 7. Was that the specific resolution? It yeah, failed, it was. though. Is that, could you tell us about that experience, it, how it went? What was the reception? It, let's call it a success, and I'll qualify that by the following. We have 55 AIA members, members of the American Institute of Architects, who co-sponsored this resolution. So for the first time in history, of our five-year history of lobbying the AIA, we now have a resolution on the floor, and uh, there were 400 of the top AIA, their management mostly, including their board, uh, who then, after our case was made, came out and said, uh, they actually lied. They said, oh, that we, we looked at this already, you know, and they didn't. Uh, uh, seriously at all provide any con firm conclusion. Oh yeah, we've looked at this and the building came down by normal office fires, which is the official story of this 47-story skyscrapers collapse in seven seconds down to the ground symmetrically after witnesses hear explosions. On Friday, September 11th, architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth partnered with the recently revived Firefighters for 9-11 Truth and Unity for the debut of a documentary presentation called Firefighters, Architects, Engineers, Expose the Myths of 9-11. Firefighters for 9-11 Truth and Unity is made up of former and current firefighters from fire departments around the nation who question the official version of events. In the new documentary, the former firefighter gives a presentation on how he used the National Fire Protection Association's own guidebook to prove that the National Institute of Standards and Technology's investigation was incomplete. Learning that what I had been told wasn't true was shocking enough. Not being able to talk to people and not having a healthy way to deal with it, so I, I felt like I couldn't go anywhere. And I started giving up on myself and realized, like, what's the point? I felt like there was so much apathy around me that I stopped trying. When I was in 9-11 Truth only, I was blaming people. I was like, I identified who I thought were the people responsible. And it wasn't until I made the shift and I went, this isn't a people problem. This is a systems problem. It's our systems that are bringing out the worst in us. So if we, and there's all kinds of science to back this up. If we're in a, a system that we're supported, our basic needs are met, and, you know, we have love and compassion, we don't do the things that we see in the world today. Also speaking at the 14th anniversary symposium and publicly for the first time was Henry Pavlock, a survivor of the North Tower. Pavlock recently published One Way Elevator, a novel exploring his experience in the North Tower and what led him to question the government's official 9-11 story. In his book, Pavlock's character finds a book that claims 9-11 was an inside job, which leads him to explore the 9-11 truth movement. Pavlock describes feelings of guilt for surviving the terror attacks, and he says that the guilt initially prevented him from questioning the official story of 9-11. I want to find out exactly what really happened, not only for myself, but for all those people who died, all the people who have, you, we heard today that there were, as of last year, there were 3,700 people with cancer who were first responders from 9-11 saying that the air was safe to breathe. I mean, look at the wars that it's spurred and how many people died in the wars and how many people are continuing to die. There are 22 suicides on average a day. And those numbers, are, I don't think they're counted in the official 
death toll. Before I started writing it, I was saying people might say you're just trying to make money off 9-11. And then I thought about who was making money off 9-11. I said, it's the defense industry, it's the private contractors. They're the ones who are making the money. It really is important to look at history. You know, what controls the world? It's money. You know, we, we don't talk about the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds. These people control the world, okay? So, like, blaming it on Bush or blaming it on Cheney, that's silly. Blaming it on Israel is silly. You know, everyone's a patsy in this. You know what I mean? It's a matter of controlling the resources of the world. They don't want peace. They don't want democracy. Money makes, or war makes money. You go back to Smedley Butler. You know, war is a racket. I mean, of course it was a conspiracy. Two or more people in a room, or two or more people plotting anywhere to do something illegal, is a conspiracy. Yeah. So our government has a conspiracy theory. Yeah. Their conspiracy theory is it was 19 people, of which we've shown the photographs to you, although six of them are, are alive somewhere. That's their conspiracy theory. I encourage everyone to file FOIA requests. Never take anyone's word for anything. Don't take my word for it. Please be skeptical. And if you ever see me anywhere, demand that I prove anything that you heard me say. I'm more than willing to do it to you. I'll flood your mailbox with every piece of information that I have. And uh, then you can go ahead and file your own request and make sure the documents that I give you are not doctored or altered in, in any way. That would be awesome. But I encourage everybody to file their own FOIA requests. For the organizers of this year's event and the family members and activists who continue to question 9-11, they hope that by presenting evidence that counters the government's claims, they can create a change in the American consciousness, leading to the release of the 28 pages and a call for a new and independent investigation. As the media and politicians are quick to remind us to never forget 9-11, we must also remember to never forget to question the government's official version of events. Let us never forget those who died on this day 14 years ago, and let us not allow the financers of this crime to go unpunished.